I'm just a hangman. I'm supposed to kill people. No, no. Cut the stick off. Cut the stick off. I don't want to. You cut off whatever piece I tell you to cut off. <laughs> Is this a sex thing? <laughs> <laughs> so I've got some uh, interesting stuff to listen to when I do the edit. You know, yeah, we, we had a some surprise, don't you? We had some <laughs> linguistic questions for you, but you can get back to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Since it's I your edit. Back... Huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> so um, when I got back from Scar Festival, I mentioned to Michelle that I probably wouldn't go next year, and that's nothing against Scar Festival in Norway. I had a lovely time. I said I probably wouldn't go next year. And last night she said, uh, "Do you know what? Next year you probably should go to Sweden, and both, all three of you have a meet up there." <laughs> so, uh, what do you what do you two think to that? You're you're both very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh... I don't think we need your permission to come to Sweden, KJ. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it would be nice if you were yeah. <laughs> uh, not away that week. I mean, yeah. <laughs> But that would have been cool, though. I mean, if we just one week you were away at work and then we just uh, <laughs> spoken to your wife, we headed over and we made a project in your workshop, and just suddenly you were at a conference somewhere, and it's like ding ding on your phone, and it's like you, me and Glenn uh, uh, <laughs> making an extension to your table or something. <laughs> a YouTube video of us rearranging his workshop completely. <laughs> <laughs> That would be nice. Yeah, <laughs> a big tub of super glue and just glue it all to the ceiling and turn it upside down. <laughs> that was a classic many years ago when when someone went away. I remember in the street where we used to live, all the parents had, or some of them at least had, uh, keys to each other's houses, or they knew where the keys was. So if you if you needed to borrow something or if something happened, then you could go over and look at whatever needed fixing or something. And of course it became a, a running joke when, when someone went away on holiday, like the, the day before they came home, four or five people got together and they moved all their living room furniture outside on the lawn and then just rearranged it as it is in the living room with all the details and everything. <laughs> so when they came home, it's like, that's our living room <laughs> outside. And then, of course, when it came to carrying everything in again, all the neighbors were gone. <laughs> Not a soul <laughs> in sight. Just as the heavens opened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that was taken into consideration. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, a trip to Sweden would be nice. Um, yeah. We'd have to do Stockholm, wouldn't we? So we could see KJ's workshop yeah even though i'd quite like to go to glenland <laughs> yeah gothenburg yeah yeah you can you should go go by go by gothenburg but then it's i mean that's a long way around i guess so yeah mm. yeah it's a bit of a stopover but uh, yeah but then again we then we need to do research <coughs> we need to look uh, more into the no maybe we should just be the Swedish maker community. I mean, <laughs> on the East Coast. I think West Coast is covered, but yeah. Yeah, probably. But as I said, I don't <laughs> know many of them. <laughs> it's 40 draws, isn't there? He's uh, he's one of yours. Yeah, yeah, but he's farther south, so... Uh, I mean, it's not <laughs> extremely far away, but it's a, meet, a yeah. bit of a drive. Well, he, was in, he was in Norway the other week. That's a bit of a drive too. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That depends on what you what you mean by locally. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. As long as it's in Scandinavia, it's locally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you need something to, yeah, something to do. Uh, I mean, I, I heard on the Making It podcast that Jimmy Dresta. <laughs> He went through Stockholm on his way back and went to the Vasa muse Museum. Yeah. I was going to say that. Talking about yeah. making, we could go to the Vasa Museum. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's where I went with Rasmus uh, the other 
so yeah, and that's the the thing to show our one of our biggest failures on 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 show. Uh, Why is it? It's the big uh, big wooden ship that sank in the harbor like three hundred years ago. Oh, okay, something like yeah. that. And then we uh, took it up again <laughs> in the sixties, I think. Uh, and built a museum for it <laughs> because it, it was r- rather well preserved because yeah. uh, the because of all the pollution I think in the, <laughs> well, in the harbor. Um, I I don't know much about the history, but I worked in the Norwegian Directorate for Cultural Heritage, and of course there is a lot of uh, in all the the right senses of the word so, some material wood nerds there, and I just tapped into whatever information I could get from any of them, and uh, we actually visited the Vasa Museum. Uh, at the work trip and it, it's interesting because even though the the sea uh, between well basically between Sweden and Finland and it is very brackish so it, it does preserve ships very well you have a lot of ships who sunk in there who, who are just sitting pristine on the bottom um, but once you get it up some of the processes start decaying and uh, it's like with the cannons and something that they pick up from seawater they have to put them in some uh, solution for several years to to neutralize the process and sometimes they they can't really do it all the way through and that's a bit the same with the Vasa ship as well because in the beginning when they built this museum you could actually go inside and and see it and of course at some point they just restricted the public to go in there because we're in tear but now it's so fragile that you hardly can work there because the decaying processes are are very much still going on and one of the things that they do is that they they coat it with something to prevent air from getting to it to slow down the processes and i don't know the science behind it but at some point it still happens so you have like the Norwegian Viking Viking ships that's in the museum it's the same and they of course some varnish lacquer something has been put outside them and they started they, they still decayed inside so it's now basically just a hard transparent shell <laughs> with wood dust in it <laughs> and now they're building a new museum and I've spent years planning on how to move these, how to build a new building without too much vibrations because if there is a breeze going through the museum, it can like poof and it's just a pile of dust. <laughs> so all the ligaments and things keeping the, the wood together is gone uh, several years ago. So yeah, and it's a bit the same with the uh, Vasa Museum as well, I think. Uh, if it's the same processes or not, I don't know, but yeah. Do you think they went Probably. through the same process of a make, as a maker and uh, you know found a little bit of scrap wood and tried a few finishes out first <laughs> to get the best results? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got Ruby Owls, <laughs> A bit of polyurethane. Oh, well, I, I, one of them had an affiliate link, so it's <laughs> Ruby <laughs> <Monopoly>. <laughs> I mean, it's huge. So yeah, the, the <laughs> kickback on that one. <laughs> Oof, yeah. Probably bought himself a, a Festool uh, <laughs> Domino for those money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what else would you want from a, a maker meetup that wasn't tied to a show? Um, I mean, I think... as anything that I always want when I go to Sweden, it, it's cheap alcohol and cheese. <laughs> I mean, oh, <laughs> only a Norwegian will say that uh, that alcohol is cheap in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Glenn? What's your uh, perception? of so what do you want out of Sweden? Well, it was I did have other ideas, but then you said alcohol and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, if, I mean, if you guys were here for any length of time, I mean, there would be um, we've got big, um, I don't know, like a flea market, but indoor, like a big market like that, which is brilliant. I love that. There's a reclamation yard in my village, which is just full of rusty junk, which is fascinating. And then um, 
you know, you've got a bit of maker time in, in your actual workshop as well, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably take you to my mother in law's and she would do a little workshop with you on what she does in her art world. Mm. So yeah. <laughs> Sounds lovely. I mean also <laughs> the uh I mean in, in Sweden of course it would be probably cheaper and quicker to fly, but I would probably drive in the off chance we'd go somewhere and yeah, flea market or something like ooh, then I could bring stuff home. The question is, how is the easiest way to get to you, Glenn, with a car? Uh, of course, uh, not thinking about Erasmus, who has uh, anvils all over the continent that he needs someone to collect for him. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, the, I, bring it. I need that steam engine. And yeah, when you said, Mark, <laughs> there is a lot of like post-industrial revolution stuff over at UK yeah. that, yeah, I could fill up a van. Yeah, I don't know. How, how is, it, is it for you to get to France <laughs> in the car? It's not well, hard, but it's a bit of a drive. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's basically a two-hour drive. A, yeah. Two hour? <laughs> oh, two-day. Okay, two-day drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Road trip. <laughs> you know, I got new oil in my car now, so it's fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what, once you've got to France, it's a doddle. <laughs> yeah. No, I was. I mean, if they nah, still, if <clears throat> the the boat from Bergen to Manchester was in operation, I mean, it's it's an eight hour drive just to get there, and then it's the ferry, so it's no, it takes too much time. I don't. I'm not eighteen anymore. I don't enjoy driving that much. No. Yeah, according to Google, it would take twenty five hours for me to drive to Glen. That's two oh, thousand one hundred kilometers. That's surprisingly. Yeah. I mean, that is. But then I would be goal. dead <laughs> if <laughs> I tried that. <laughs> That's about twelve hundred miles, isn't it? I've done six. Yeah, something like that. I've done six hundred and fifty miles in a day, and I couldn't have done much more than that. Oh, my ass would be. I left my body at that point. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was on a, a trip to uh, Limoges in France, and um, so we'd done. It was a very early start. <laughs> Three of us in my van. A very long day's driving. We completed six hundred miles. We were fifty miles away from the destination, and the van broke down. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so yeah, it's a, that it was at that point you start questioning your life choices on why am I doing this? And... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was an expensive trip. That was. <laughs> oh, I can't still forget i i bought my car in the north of norway and i thought well cars are a bit cheaper there because it's far away uh, but yeah i could fly in uh, i bring a friend and we do a road trip and we drive back and then we can see the scenery sounds like a good idea call the friend yeah he's in let's fly up and we landed I think it was round noon and what I didn't think of because I didn't think was this is north of the Arctic Circle and this was in February so by the time we got to the car dealership and got the car out it was two o'clock and it was already dark and of course <laughs> the quickest way which is 25 hours in car is straight south through Finland and then through the coast, the uh, east coast of Sweden, until you get to, I think it's uh, Moura or something, and then you just shoot across diag diagonally through the Sweden uh, until you reach the Norwegian border. And of course, it was nighttime, it was snowing, and what I forgot is that Finland and Sweden is basically just pine tree after pine tree after oh, pine tree yeah so you're just driving and of course that snow that you can't have your uh, I, I mean if you have your uh, headlights on you get blinded by that so you turn the headlights down as far as you can but you can't really go that fast because you can't see anything and it's wood 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 and then of course massive trailers just coming plowing towards you out of nowhere so it was a nerve-wracking 25 hours. <laughs> so, never doing that again. 
<laughs> so yeah, road trips are unless you have enough money that you can get one of those modern RVs where you could actually where they actually have seat belts on all the seats where you also have tables and so on, then you can have a designated driver and the rest of the people can sit back and like play cards or work at the table or something, then I can see a road trip be semi pleasurable, but yeah, that's a hard stretch even then I think. I'd also quite like to see sorry, going back to the if we did a meet up in Sweden. Is it Bill Tamer? Your is that your hardware store? It's the low budget one. Yeah, I'd like to see one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Just like they always talk about um I can't remember what it's called now, the one in America. They always talk about the same one, don't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't the uh, Home Depot. Though. Home Depot, that's it. Yeah. yeah. That's an annoying thing. <coughs> I mean, then you should drive. I, I, of course, I went to Home Depot because my wife wanted to go to a Target uh, in, when we were in the States. Uh, I always find something that you don't have back home, and yeah. I want that, but how do you bring uh, something the size of a barrel uh, when you're only flying like hand luggage so it's it's a pain in the ass you always find something I want that but bring it back home can't really happen yeah. <clears throat> I always like to uh, when I went to America one of the things I wanted to do was try a Twinkie because <laughs> you hear about it so much <laughs> on the American films <laughs> and I tried tried one of those things <laughs> they're bloody vile yeah, <laughs> yeah. those are proper yeah. horrible I think it was, I think it was in Zombieland, yeah, uh, where he was like craving those real bad, and I like, oh, I started craving them as well, just because they looked. Or he made them sound delicious in a post-apocalyptic world, but yeah, we came to the states and ooh, there they are! I bought one, and it's like, oh, the texture and the lack of taste, and it's just sugar. Yeah, it's they just taste like chemicals. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. I mean, since trying some American chocolate, I just think that everything yeah. there sounds like. Yeah, I don't know how to describe it in a nice way. Yeah, sorry, sorry to our American listeners, but American chocolate is. I don't even know why anybody eats it. It's gross. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is it? They, they. I mean, they remove the <laughs> flavor. <laughs> the, I mean the. the <laughs> The fat, the cocoa fat, and replace it with, with some other f- thing that's cheaper instead because they're allowed to do it. I think in a lot of uh, okay. the bars, uh, I think I think that makes them hold out better in heat as well. Right. Uh, so I guess that's uh, that's a, a plus side, but it it doesn't taste nice. No. <laughs> and I mean, to be fair, I I'm sorry, Glenn, but I don't think that. UK chocolate is that good either. Yeah, that's fair. And if I didn't, I didn't see much of a difference between ours and yours. To be fair, yeah, it's. Mm, yeah. I mean, I might just be picky. Who knows? Yeah. Well, to yeah, be cause... fair, I can find chocolate I like in the UK. I can't. Maybe milk duds. Uh, I found in the states, but if that is American, I do not know what. Yeah, we had, or my wife at least have uh, several good friends from, uh, yeah, she was a little girl until now in the States, and every time they visit, they are amazed that they buy fruits or bread or something, and in two days, three days, it, it's moldy, sagging, like, <laughs> but I bought it recently three days ago, and it's gone yeah. bad, and like, if you buy bread or vegetable in the States, I mean, it can be on the countertop for four or five weeks and still look fresh, but that can't be good. Yeah. And, it, and it is cool to see the, the comparison between a lot of foods in Europe and, and Scandinavia, especially, and the Americas. There, there is so much things in, like, for instance, cereals. It's the same brands. But a lot of the things that are in the American ones are, are not even legal to put in it in Norway. So they have to take it out. So, And of course, you have some brands that you're used to back home. And then when you go to the States, like 
I just want something I know for a change, so I'll buy that one. And then you just pour milk in a bowl and put it in, and like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, thanks for listening, to our two American listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> one, once they're gone, we can uh, talk about the election. I mean, one, no, one, no, one, no, one, no, 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 no. Once this episode is out, of course, <laughs> then has, it's all uh, done. But yeah, yeah, it's either one way or the other. <laughs> but when we are recording this, this is the big night, and me and my wife is like, do we want to stay up and follow it? No, we need to go to sleep. But I, I remember back the last time when Trump actually won, I, I went to bed did not in my wildest dreams even before and after I went to sleep uh, think that that would happen I, I remember waking up I just grabbed my phone and like <laughs> crap and then I just heard behind my back my wife yeah yep <laughs> so I'm oh tomorrow is going to be a big day uh, yeah I'm, I'm uh, doing what uh, a lot of uh, American people I follow and that sort of thing say that yeah we're just gonna watch a movie tonight and not think about it and we deal with whatever happens tomorrow instead <laughs> and, yeah. and and all the 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 election thing would be done with in six months or so so then it's all business as usual again yeah so on that note you can uh Cho- choose the the number one crude mistakes uh endorse the movie choice of the night you can go and watch the highlander <laughs> <laughs> i really want to watch it now <laughs> yeah me too me too i don't remember when it was ages since i since it's, i saw it, it feels it's worth like... it just for the queen soundtrack isn't it yeah i, I yeah. mean <laughs> to think that i think we thought talked about this before but that they made the movie first and then <coughs> queen actually watched it uh, yeah we got the we got the soundtrack covered, and then they added the music afterwards. Because think of how boring that thing was have been yeah. to watch without the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, it's like watching a woodworking video without sound, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it must is, have been really. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what the the song was called, but the I mean, with the lyric "Princess of the Universe," it's it's very much. Yeah. It's an awesome song, but it, it's obvious that it's it's written for a movie to follow along a plot line because as a song, it it feels a bit all over the place. But still, it's yes. I mean, it's Queen. It, it you can't really they should be all over on. the place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they also the 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 really wonderfully terrible Flash Gordon movie. Uh, also have the K- Queen soundtrack, which yeah. also makes it great. Yeah, that is all. Yeah, that that's, is also that's just great. Anyway, song. yeah, <laughs> I, I I have a soft spot for that movie, and it's <laughs> and the sound effects is basically like the, the the thunder and lightning. I think it's someone just striking a, a piece of <laughs> metal plate or something like. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, really? <laughs> Ah, it's wonderful. It's I haven't wonderful. seen the movie though. I just heard the song, so that that's weird. I, 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 I you didn't see Flash? No. It's great. I, I mean, I, I saw it as a as a young kid and fell in <laughs> love with it immediately. But I mean, it, they have some. I mean, they have Max von Sydow and uh, Timothy Dalton. I mean, really good actors. Yeah. And then they have the the guy playing Walton, who's like a more like an opera guy has a really bombastic larger than life and then they have some extremely terrible actors people who should never be anywhere okay, close but, to acting because but they look good it's got brian, brian blessed in it isn't he the uh big boomy voice guy oh yeah yeah he was yeah. his name i i, I love <laughs> his uh, performance he's a he's a he's famous he's a complete boaster and liar but you know famous for it so he claimed he climbed, uh, climbed Mount Everest and all sorts of stuff it's still going still going strong <laughs> and then as a kid when uh, Flash Gordon came out as well one of the actors um, we have a, a kids 
series here called Blue Peter. Okay, I haven't heard of it. Uh, no. okay. It's just a they, they 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 do a little bit of making in that, and it's just a little bit current affairs for kids, basically. But I think the act, uh, the person who hosted that, Peter Duncan, was also in Flash Gordon, so that in, hmm. endeared a lot of the kids to watch it as well. I think. <laughs> but yeah, interesting film. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they'd ever make anything like that again. No, and I mean all the practical effects and yeah, <laughs> it's it's wonderful. <laughs> It's it's funny those uh, those movies that you watch uh, as a kid that really sticks with you, and you can't. I mean, you can see that all things wrong with them, but you see it with rose tinted glasses, and you can't yeah. can't really fault it for being bad because you <laughs> love it. So imagine there's such a thing as a, a a maker village. So there's a, a lot there's a lot of makers together who live close together. But do you think you go off the making and start making? low budget films after a while the temptation <laughs> has got to be there hasn't it yeah I mean it... <laughs> the, the only thing stopping me from, from doing that in the first place was <laughs> not having a, a cast and a, a crew to yeah. actually, <laughs> actually do it because yeah the maker community the musical <laughs> Maybe that's the thing. If uh, if we do the Sweden make a meetup, maybe we'll just make a, a half hour long low budget movie. <laughs> <laughs> Midsummer too. Uh. <laughs> Come on, you know that'd be great, guys. <laughs> you know what? That is a brilliant idea. Like, you just meet up, and then it's two day making that uh, big. Uh, flowery uh, pole and then we get drunk and dance around it like toads. I love it. That would be awesome. <laughs> Sounds like yeah, a could plan. bring the wives and the kids over. I mean, they, they could come over for the festivities the last day and then, uh, of course, we had like a maker stint a couple of days in advance. <laughs> Sounds good. But that got me thinking or remembering because we kind of glossed over it in the last episode or last half pint. Um, the Red, Red Bull Soapbox Challenge because, uh, I mean, someone listening to the uh, the recorders, it might sound like we committed to something. <laughs> when I started thinking about it, did we really know? <laughs> Did somebody comment? No. No. <laughs> so, um, I mean, if you want to, you can cut this out and you can just <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mention it again. <laughs> I mean, we did end uh, the live episode with uh, how do you want to see Glenn die? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no one <laughs> wants to see you die, apparently, since we haven't got any there suggestions. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's good. a good thing, I guess. <laughs> Because I, I I put uh, the the reason I got to think about it was I put the ice cream van uh, in storage, which means I moved it on the other side of the house. <laughs> <laughs> out of sight, out yeah. of mind. Yeah. That has four wheels and it fit the minimum requirements. So yeah, um, I, I need to save this. I had a chat with the wife. Should we just toss it or? Will the kids use it next summer? And like, all right, let's not take any decisions now. So let's move it behind the house and see if it survives the winter. I'll be honest with you. I've seen it. It's looking a bit sick, Havar. I think it's. Uh, I think it's done for, mate. I don't think that's a healthy environment for the kids anymore. <laughs> Just needs a <laughs> lick of paint. <laughs> it's good for the immune system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not. Uh, no, that's no concern. So. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but I also agree with I mean I still have the fire extinguisher we need to do, uh, have a training exercise with and a, a mm. car fire is uh, is a good uh, yeah that's a good simulation yeah. <laughs> take take those wheels off though those we wheels do look decent <laughs> yeah but they, they give them away for free willy nilly oh, so yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, burn them because then. they add <laughs> they add to the <laughs> the illusion of it being decently put together. <laughs> so, uh, 
I mean, the, the axles doesn't protrude enough for the locking mechanism to, like, latch on enough. So if you try to move it too much, then <laughs> every once in a while a wheel pops off and you have to smack it back on again. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not drivable per se. <laughs> None of that was in the video, was it? <laughs> no, I didn't drive it in the video, actually. So, no, uh, yeah. yeah, but... <laughs> Yeah, that would make for a good video, though, lighting it on fire. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. You got a lot of <laughs> Isn't that your solution in like half the projects? <laughs> they all <laughs> should good. end with lighting it on fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to light the organ on fire. That's, that's going to happen. But I was sitting here playing at it here the other day because I'm, I'm now recorded uh, the pedal organ intro for. The Christmas song, so I now have that nailed. Um, still haven't decided if I should play some outro plinkety plonkety sounds on it. <laughs> yeah, it. It's ready to be burned, so uh, yeah, nice. That's happening. If you'd if you'd lived here, that would have been tonight. It's bonfire night here tonight. Yeah, I saw that. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the thing though, I, I'm hoping. That will be the last yeah. video of the video. So I'm hoping to stretch that. I It would be so cool if the ground was white and there was like snowflakes in the air and it was like uh, in the evening so you could see the orange light from the street lights coming down and then just flicking that match. And <laughs> The question is, should I call the fire brigade and just... FYI, there's going to be a flash fire at <laughs> yeah. soon. Don't bother. <laughs> Could um, give it the same send off that they planned for Guy Fawkes. That was to be dragged backwards to his place of execution, cut off his private parts and burn them in front of him, <laughs> disembowel him while he was still alive. Then cut off his head and then cut him into four other pieces. Why? Why but the what torture did he do part? to deserve that? I mean, he just he made some Halloween masks with a mustache <laughs> on. And, I mean, how Didn't bad he try can to that blow be? up Parliament or something like that? He tried to blow up Parliament, but he was um, we had some silly rules on uh, Catholicism then, which uh, he was he was trying to f- fight for their rights for that. Oh, yeah. Doing just doing it in a, quite an extreme manner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But still, why, why torture someone? Uh, just so inventive back in the 1600s. Yeah. <laughs> because they didn't have YouTube and Nintendo, so then yeah, they had exactly. to. <laughs> what should we do? We should cut off his dick and burn it <laughs> <laughs> in front of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, that's someone's job. Would you like to do that? <laughs> Uh, what they're paying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then again, I'm uh, just a hangman. I'm supposed to kill people. No, no. Cut the stick <laughs> off. Cut the stick off. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> you cut off whatever piece I tell you to cut off. Yeah. <laughs> or else it's you next. Is this a sex thing? <laughs> 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 no, of course not. <laughs> We're the church. We don't have sex things. Blasphemy. Burn him. Yeah. So. <laughs> One more to the stake. Uh, I don't think it's going to get any better than that. Should we end it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that would go, so that's probably best. Yeah. Bye. 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 <laughs>